Welcome to Acorn to Oak with Penny Quail Pierce and co-host Matthew Donaghy. Within each acorn, there is the DNA that strives to be a mighty oak tree. All it needs to reach its potential for greatness is to be activated. You are the acorn. On this show, we will share with you the tools and guidance you need to grow into the person you are meant to be. And now your host, Penny Quail Pierce and co-host Matthew Donaghy. Good evening. Hi, it's um, happy um, Thursday, which is the day before Good Friday. So I'm sure we're all really looking forward to uh, the weekend. Um, We've got brilliant weather here over in the UK at the moment. So we're looking forward to a splendid holiday weekend. So I wish you uh, well with yours. Uh, Just handing over to Matthew for a minute so he can say hi. Good evening, everybody. Um, afternoon for everybody in America. Um, don't know about you guys, but we're just going into an Easter holiday of four days. So everybody, or most people, are really happy with the extra two days of the weekend this week. So. <laughs> <laughs> Not that we're looking forward to it at all, Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, this is the thing. I mean, in England, usually we have a thing around bank holidays or any kind of Easter break holiday. We'll have cracking weather the week before, the weekend of the bank holiday, usually it rains. Um, But we've been promised good weather, so very much looking forward to it. Yes, I I am very lucky. I live down um, in the New Forest, which is on the coast, and um, we definitely had an influx of people coming in this evening. It's just... uh, (laughs) people go completely mad because they know it's going to be really nice weather. So uh, all the all the bed and breakfasts are booked out solid. And, you know, so if we um, my husband and I have already said that if we go down to the beach at all, probably on Saturday, we're going to have to get there early in the morning and park up so we can get a spot. But I'm sure it's the same wherever you are in the world when it's uh, yeah, when people manage to get four days off together, it's such a, a real treat. So, uh, yeah, what are we talking about? Uh, what are we talking about this evening? We're talking about a celebration of self, a coming together of yin and yang. Um, you know, and when we're talking about yin and yang, it's not just men are men and women are women. It's also talking about inner balance and the balance within self. Um you know that there's lots of different stuff that's been written on this so hopefully matthew and i will entertain you with our take on this so i know in the write-up we we basically started off with saying you know uh, for the men have you ever wondered why women get all emotional when you're a few minutes late and women, are you driven mad by men who ask you uh, where they, where you've put something because they can't find it? You stop on what you're doing uh, and you go to wherever your husband's looking and you find it in less, or partner, uh, in less than 30 <laughs> seconds because it's right in front of them. And, you know, how many times in our society today do we feel that men and women are in competition with each other and there's no real com- uh, communication or connection between us you know and you know that men are from mars and women are from from venus and we just don't speak the same language and i think it's really uh it's really good that we've got uh, obviously myself uh penny and we've got matthew to give you the male perspective on this and we were doing a workshop um in fact it was a few years ago now where we were running what we what we uh designed as the inner balance uh weekend and we all went away we were actually it was quite amazing because there were just as many men as there were women on the actual course and it, it just seems to work out that way when we do inner balance 
And it just was really interesting, some of the discussions and uh, brainstorming that uh, we did during the course and how the men who were there were just gobsmacked uh, by some of the things that the, the women were talking about when women get all emotional because you're a few minutes late. And it's uh, so obviously I'm going to talk from the, the feminine point of view and then Matthew will definitely come in on the, <laughs> the, the, the masculine side. But, yeah. uh, you know, the women were basically just trying to describe that, you know, when men are a few minutes late and they haven't bothered to call us, you know, they may be 20 minutes late or, or half an hour late and they're just driving home, um, probably. Uh, but we're looking at the clock. You know, we've either done or we're, we're thinking of getting some food ready so that, uh, you know, we can we can eat together and you know it may be time to the second of when we're expecting our husband home or our partner home and when they're late it's like you know a woman goes because she is a you know she's a a gatherer rather than a hunter she just automatically starts to think well where is he and then five minutes late i can't believe that he's this late and then her mind will go on to you know having her husband or partner dead in a ditch um, because her mind will take on the whole she sees the big picture so she's she's automatically worrying about you know where is he is he hurt is he harmed you know i'm going to have to be the sole provider for my family because he's dead in the ditch and have we got the right insurance uh, to cover his his early death and all of these things are churning around um her mind and you know then uh her husband or partner opens the door and is surprised that he either get you know the, the least amount of grief that he'll get is one a one line and <laughs> say where were you and the most is that she actually hits him around the head with a frying pan so um you know when we had some of these uh talks during the inner balance course the, the men who were there were just whoa well, how can your mind work that fast? And, I, you know, it was just a case of, well, that's what we do. We think of the worst possible scenarios, you know, hoping, of, obviously, that that doesn't happen. But, you know, that's how a, man, a woman actually thinks, is she thinks in, uh, you know, the big, as I was saying, the big picture. She doesn't go from one thought and then five minutes later think of another. She, she is constant. It's the way women's minds work. So, uh, obviously, you were, Matthew, you were one of the people who were actually on that course. So, uh, what was your take on that when you heard it? Um, well, I'm sure, uh, as a lot of the male listeners are, are feeling right now, for me, it was a wow moment. Um, I, when, when women are really honest about how they feel and why they feel the way that they feel, and that that's the, the way, just the way they work, we, we don't understand it, but we can work with it. Um, so we don't understand why women have the... Um, 15 thought forms at once so like you were saying one could be oh that's all right he, he may just be a few minutes late maybe stop for petrol right down to they could be dead in a ditch this could have happened that could have happened at that moment in time all the guy is thinking is i'm so glad i'm on my way home i'm only going to be 10 minutes late so i won't bother ringing if he even had a clue that that's what his wife would be going through in the next 10 minutes, if he didn't make that call or send that text, it's the first thing he would do. Um, because ultimately, us guys don't want to upset women and women don't want to upset men, but, but we do it without even realising. Um, so the women would sort of say, oh, but you didn't even consider me. And we would sort of say, well, yeah, actually we didn't in that moment. But because it was only a few minutes, I didn't realise it was such a big deal. Um, 
So we work very one thing at a time um, rather than the 15 things. So I had no idea that women, that that was the thought process. Um, so it pretty is. pretty shocked when I first heard it, but it was... It is, it, it, it is astonishing. It is astonishing. But when you actually go back, you know, for, for when we were, you know, um, hunter-gatherers, and, yeah. you know, the man's job was very much, you know, being the hunter. So he went out and, you know, as he was just striding after that, uh, that animal he was going to slay and bring it <laughs> back for dinner. Um, yeah. I've just had one focus. It's that deer or it's that, you know, hog or it's that whatever it is that you, they were actually hunting. They're very, very focused on that one thing. Whereas women who, you know, traditionally were the gatherers had to have eyes everywhere. So they're looking in trees and down at roots and digging and gathering uh, all sorts of different things to accompany what the man had gone out to hunt, you know, his sort of attitude. Mm -hmm. And it was, um, you know, when we were actually in those days, and we we still do that, you know, women can, you know, a multitask with a tremendous ease, whereas a man will write a, you know, either write a list or have a list in his mind, and he'll do one job, and he'll finish it, and then he'll go on to the next job, and he'll go on to the next job. And it's really interesting to watch how we both work. And if we learn to communicate and connect with each other, then we can, we're not going to think the same. We're two totally different species in a way. Um, and there is no point in going into competition with each other. The whole point is to complement each other realize where the strengths and the weaknesses are and for the other person in in a partnership if it if it is a, a you know a man woman relationship is to understand that we need to just up the level of communication so we can actually find out you know what's actually going on one of the things i i definitely found when uh my husband and i first uh got married and were living together is that things would work well if we asked each other what the plan for the day was because obviously my husband would have a plan in his mind and you know don't get me wrong if i had a plan in my mind i would let him know what i was expecting to do that day uh, but then it allows you to communicate and and not assume and you know we know what assume means you know as out of you and me you know when you assume or you think you know what uh your partner is thinking or, or or wanting or their authentic needs you can bet your bottom dolly you'll get it wrong yeah. so uh you know this is why i i love that book you know men are from mars and women are from venus we are t we are definitely two different species the way that we approach things you know men are you know traditionally are much more task orientated whereas women are a lot more uh you know uh emotionally based and therefore are there to uh take care of the family's emotional needs and they're you know, you, traditionally they're more the cooks and and the gatherers having said that um i'm not the cook in my family my husband's a much better cook than i am <laughs> so <laughs> But uh, I know my strengths and I know my weaknesses. It was probably because I didn't get married until I was 46. So he is much more uh, adventurous when it comes to food than I am. So is there anything you'd like to add there, Matthew? <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's a really important point because, um, I mean, obviously uh, we're not saying all women are like this and all, all men are like this. It's, it is a generalisation around, around behaviour. Um, but 
yeah, I mean, we got we got so many insights just from learning that it, it, it's a base. We don't we don't unless you communicate something clearly. Um, how are you expected to know? We assume we know what that person's thinking, and when when obviously, like you said, when you assume you, you're usually wrong. But when you're making an assumption from from my point of view, I'm assuming they're thinking what I'm thinking, and they are like what I'm like. Well, I couldn't expect any woman to be like that because because they're a woman. So so we sort of assume, oh, women don't understand me, and or you you hear it very often in relationships. Oh, my husband never understands me, and I'll be talking to him, and he hasn't heard a word I've said. Um, I mentioned three things, and the only thing he heard was the first thing. And it's because when you, when you, if you explain three things to a man, because we like to work things through one thing at a time, we will miss the second and the third thing you've told us, because we're so busy working the first thing that you told us all the way through. And women think that we're not listening, and we are listening. It's just the way we work. Um, and when you when you realise that, like you very much like you say, we're not, we're not in competition. Um, we are here to work together. The the key on this is is communication. Um, the more you communicate, and the clearer and the, and the more honest you are, the easier a relationship is. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that think, does 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 my husband do that just to wind me up? Because it certainly feels like it. Rather than communicating back that, maybe asking the question, A, why do you do that? Um, and then explaining that, oh, actually, that, that winds me up because of A, B, and C. And the answer you'll probably get is, oh, oh, I didn't realise. Oh, I won't do that then. And whereas you could spend all the time in thinking that, that your wife or your partner is doing something that really annoys you, when one clear communication can sort the whole thing. And it clears up so much time to have the, the joyful conversations and, and, and you can have a real laugh with it as well. Once you, once you understand that that is just the natural way that they work, you can have a laugh with it and it doesn't annoy you. It's, it, it, all of a sudden it's not personal. It doesn't feel personal. And that's just from the communicating it. Um, Yes, I think it's it's real interesting. I don't know um, in your households, but um, definitely uh, we have all sorts of different things we can talk about after the break. Yep. Your conscious connection to a more mindful world. Own Times Radio. IOM FM. Namaste, friends. This is David Pramal and Miten. And we want to let you know that we will be in America and Canada this May. We'll be coming with our Wings of Mantra World Tour. Coming up the West Coast to Boulder, Santa Fe, Sedona, Scottsdale, Santa Barbara, L.A., Marin, Santa Cruz, San Jose, Escondido, Edmonds, and up to Canada to Victoria and Vancouver. You can find details on our website, devapramalmiten.com. Hope to see you there. Lots of love. Namaste. Home Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Om Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. Kathy Williams, host of Sexy Mom Abundant Life radio show on Thursdays at 5 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Pacific. On the show, we explore living abundantly in every area of your life. Ways to let go of limiting patterns and beliefs and to step into the flow of creativity and possibility, knowing you are supported by the universe. We are talking about your life. Ever wonder, is this as good as it gets? 
No, it could be so much better. At Acorn to Oak, we know you are seeking more happiness, joy, unconditional love, financial freedom, passion, and purpose. Find your unique mojo and live an extraordinary life. Want to know more? Contact us at our website, acorntooak.org.uk. One in three adults has prediabetes. One in three. That means it could be you, your football buddy, your football buddy, or you, your best man, your worst man, you, your dog walker, your cat jogger. While one in three adults has prediabetes, with early diagnosis, prediabetes can be reversed. Take the risk test at doihaveprediabetes.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and its prediabetes awareness partners. So I think one of the things, you know, before we uh, went on the break, I was uh, just going to talk about, you know, sometimes women, I don't know if you you girls uh, do the same as uh, we do uh, in the UK, but part of, part of the process is when you're clearing the downstairs of the house is you put stuff that needs to go upstairs on the bottom two bottom two or three stairs so that you can pick them all up at, at once and carry them all up once when you're next going up and when I first uh, was living with my husband you know I would do this naturally thinking that he would you know psychically pick up that all the stuff needed to go upstairs but he the times I've si- I saw him just walk up the stairs totally ignoring the piles of clothes and, you know, different bits and pieces, maybe some of uh, toiletries that I bought and various other bits and pieces, totally ignored everything and just weaved his way through, you know, <laughs> the mess to get up the stairs. And I sat there and look at him and go, why didn't you pick those up? And he would look at me completely as if I'd come from, yeah, obviously Venus. And <laughs> I just shook his head well, and said, well, why didn't you tell me they were there? And I went, well, you damn near trapped over them on the way up the stairs. <laughs> and he would just look at me and laugh and say, you know, men are si- simple creatures. If you want me to take that up the stairs, just tell me. And I would look at him and go, and I couldn't understand, you know, until I went through the process of learning more about how men think, um, that he didn't even see it. He was looking up and his eyesight was going up the stairs, not looking down at the floor. So he just didn't acknowledge it. And, you know, when we had the conversation over, obviously, over a, a period of time, uh, he he obviously started to realise he, he needed to look at the bottom of the stairs and he would naturally just pick them up because, of course, he wanted to be helpful. You know, he loves me and, and adores me as I love and adore him. Uh, but unless you actually tell each other, you know, what, what is going to be helpful to you, you know, is it's really uh, not intelligent thinking to to think someone's just going to know what you're thinking, you know, especially if you're in, a, you know, a, a man a female relationship. You know, we're not going. We don't think the same. We don't look at the same things, and we don't look at. You know, men have a. Uh, a tendency to think, you know, problem, solution, problem. Whereas um, mm. women tend not to do that. They'll tend to feel it emotionally and work it out from an emotional point of view, not necessarily a logical point of view. Although some women are very, very good at that. I'm not so good. <laughs> so uh, just get Matthew's thoughts on that. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think um, when a man realises there's a problem, the, f- the first thing we want to do is jump in and, and sort of find a solution. And again, that's, that, that can be where, where a woman just needs time to process something and, and come up with her own answers. And it almost, uh, that, that's not what they read. They don't need to be rescued in that moment, but that's what men automatically do. Um, and I think 
in, in a lot of relationships and, and, and some of my clients, some of the issues they, they come with is it almost feels like a fight to be in a relationship because they're, they're not communicating clearly and, and things that shouldn't be sort of upsetting them are. And it's just because they're not having the communication between them. Um, it can be the, the most satisfying thing in a relationship to, to work for my case, to, to, to work with a woman on a level where there's such honesty, you can communicate anything without fear of that person getting upset and, and knowing that even in that moment, if they, if they, if they do get upset, because it seems personal, that they'll work out that actually it's not personal. It's just sometimes honesty can feel personal and we can go into reaction. But when someone's being that honest with us, we, we have to we have to accept that. And you can have such an amazing relationship and it, it can take you to such such deeper levels. Just spending the time communicating and showing that you're willing to understand something that you may initially not understand. Um, so it can give you such a, a such a more deep, deep and meaningful relationship when you both know that you're, you they've got your back. They're on your team. They're, they're not fighting against you. They're not trying to upset you. Um, and that's when you can get a, a real acceleration in, in, the, in the feelings you have for each other. Because um, you realise no matter what, they've got my back. When it comes yeah. to being 100% honest, even if they think it may upset me, they'd rather be honest with me. And that yeah, I, I, I think... Yeah, sorry, sorry, uh, Matthew, talking over. <laughs> That's all right. Um, it's you know, it's so uh, important. I, you know, I found in, in my marriage, also working, uh, you know, with clientele uh, on a day-to-day -day basis um, and running workshops, is listening. You know, actually, you know. One of the things that women really, truly uh, find uh, satisfying is when they know they're being heard by their partner and they feel that, you know, that partner actually listens to them. They hear what they say. And, you know, it's it's all about trust and trusting the, the communication, knowing that it doesn't matter what happens. You know, you can talk it through until you both feel that you have uh, clarity around it and you both then can make a decision on what you would like to do as a couple rather than, you know, um, again, I have worked with many uh, couples uh, over the years where, you know, most of it, most of the uh, problems that a marriage has is missed communication or feeling, you know, a woman feeling that, that she can't take something to a man because she's already made up in her own mind what his reaction would be and he won't like me doing mm -hmm. that. Or, you know, he doesn't like it when I work, you know, 20, you know, 10 hours a day or whatever it is he wants me home to to make his dinner well have you actually asked him because you know one of the things I did ask my husband when we we first got married was I you know I'm not a great cook and he turned around and said I love to experiment be my guest experiment all you like in the kitchen <laughs> you know I am very happy to throw all the dishes that you use in the dishwasher. I mean, I don't wash them up myself, but I do obviously have a dishwasher and I can place them in the dishwasher. And he comes up with some astonishing combinations that I wouldn't have thought of. You know, I was a, a single woman and, and very career driven and mission driven you know, for 46 years uh, before I got married, obviously. <laughs> You know, uh, and I wasn't interested in cooking. I, I would go for the convenience stuff or the ready meals because actually uh, it was no, I didn't feel it was fun cooking for one, but he really, really yeah. enjoys it. So um, it's it's just having those communications. You know, um, I, I love to be out in the garden and creating and uh, doing that type of work. Whereas my husband doesn't 
enjoy it at all. He'll do some of the heavy stuff because I ask him and it, you know, he very uh, kindly helps me with it. But I love gardening. I love being out there in nature. I love just tending the plants and making them grow. He's not interested at all. So you suddenly see that, you know, s some of the, the natural um, things that people think women should do, um, I don't do. But my husband loves it. About some of the stuff that you know is expected men will do gardening, I love doing. And it's so it's mm. it's a natural finding out, and it's because we communicate um, our likes, our dislikes, our preferences. Uh, to each other on a daily basis you know it's not my you know it's not my preference to slave over a hot stone but you know such is life so i'm sure uh matthew has got some insights on these on these things too so again handing over to matthew and, and allowing him some time to talk yeah i think i'm i'm talking about experiences um what what came into mind is that um how many people out there um, are real honest about what they want to do on a day off with a partner? Because I found myself doing it in relationships where um, you wake up and you've got a day off and, and you have the conversation around what you would like to do. And my answer of what I would like to do is completely different from what she would like to do. And usually what happens in that situation is one of you sells out on what you would actually like to do and says, well, I, I, did, well, I did want to go motocross riding, but actually we'll, we'll, we'll just go shopping because that's what you want to do, and vice versa. Because there's the fear around, oh, well, I, I don't want her to think that I don't want to spend any time with her. It, it, that hasn't even come into my consciousness. It's just you've asked me what would I like to do today, and my preference would be to go motocross riding. Um, and... It ha in so many situations, we we make it wrong rather than rather than someone saying, "Oh, well, actually, you know what? I really wanted to go shopping today." Um, now, last thing a woman wants to do is drag a man round a shopping centre that doesn't want to be shopping because he's going to be in a mood all day, and you're going to ask him for advice. Does this dress look good on me? And you may not get the the, the response that you want because is in a bad mood because all he's thinking about is motocross biking. Now, rather than having an honest conversation and saying, well, actually, if your preference is to go shopping, would you mind if I didn't go? And this is, men wouldn't ask the question because they'd be afraid they'd get a no. But if the woman said, actually, I'll give my, I'll give my friend a call and we'll get some coffee and we'll go shopping and, and you go and do what you want to do. Not only do you have the honest communication in the morning, but... The second thing is you both get to do what ultimately you wanted to do, to what you loved to, to do that day. The one thing that you really, really wanted to do, you get to do. And then the third bonus is in the evening when you're having a nice romantic meal with your wife or your husband and you're having a thrilling conversation about all the things and the great day that you both had. Um, and just a small conversation and owning how you feel and what, and what your preference is can actually expand the relationship and actually you're not sat at the dinner table with nothing to talk about because you've spent the whole day together. Um, and there's the fear around we have to we have to please the other the other sex because of the assumption we've made in our own head. So again it all I think it all just comes down to the communication um, and that it can be such a it can be a better relationship if if you're truly honest. Um, because if, if you both want to do exactly the same thing every time and you never argue, I would look into that relationship because there's always going to be um, not so much arguments, but disagreements. You, we're, we're not the same. We're, we're always going to have different, different wants and desires. Um, and it's about communicating about them. And, and very much like we said earlier, you may not, you may not understand men, but when you understand how we work, it, it, it takes away the grief from it. it you you realise, oh, it's not personal. It's not doing it. It can feel personal. It's not doing it because it's personal. It's just how men are. 
it just takes the edge off. Um, and I think and also we can have better also, experiences. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Matthew. But it's all it's also really very much about, you know, realizing that you are always enough. You know, one of the reasons mm. that we tend to cave in is we we think we're going to be judged if we don't um allow uh something to happen i e go motor racing or whatever it was that matthew uh was talking about uh you know if we go shopping instead of motor racing uh will he stop loving me uh for mm. not doing what he wants um and I would say to you that, you know, don't even allow that to come in because he's he's actually, you know, if if he is doing what he loves to do, he is satisfied within himself. And as Matthew was saying, you know, you get together over a romantic deep dinner in the evening and you've got something thrilling and exciting to talk to each other around. And, you know, you can catch up um, uh, your husband on the news of what the girls are doing and, and how you, you know, maybe had a, uh, a really nice lunch out with the girls whilst you were shopping, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And a woman who feels fulfilled is going to be a lot more loving towards her partner and a man who feels fulfilled is going to be a lot more loving towards his partner and what that does also is it builds trust and trust is so important uh, between men and women when they realize they don't think the same they don't have the same aspirations and they don't have the same goals uh, once once we realise that, and therefore there is no competition between men and women, we become a lot more available to receive love and to give love. Mm -hmm. And that's what we all want. You know, we want loving relationships. We want relationships that work. We want relationships that you know, where the juicy stuff is still there. And, you know, uh, and actually look forward uh, to being with your, be you know, one of your best friends. And, you know, my husband is my best friend. And, you know, we have uh, great fun uh, talking about things. And I will actually ask him, you know, what's the men's point of view on this? And, you know, as we uh, lightly josh each other around what comes out. So we're going towards another <laughs> break. We'll see you on the other side. See you after the break. A conscious lifestyle for a mindful life. Om Times Radio, IOM FM. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Om Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Ohm Times endeavor. Host your show with Ohm Times Radio Network. Hello, I'm Sandy Sedgbeer, host of Ohm Times Magazine's flagship radio show, What is Going On? My passion is sifting through information, research, and innovations from new thought teachers, speakers, and researchers, pushing back the boundaries of what we know about life, energy, metaphysics, and the universe. I love shifting perceptions about who we are, why we're here, and how quickly impossible becomes normal when we open our minds, expand our awareness, and accept that the only limits that exist are those we place upon ourselves. So if you're the kind of forward-thinking, eager investigator of what lies beyond the current reality that most perceive, why not make a date to come play with me in the field of possibilities at 4 p.m. Pacific Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, every Thursday, and together we can discover what's really going on. We are talking about your life. Ever wonder, is this as good as it gets? No, it could be so much better. At Acorn to Oak, 
We know you are seeking more happiness, joy, unconditional love, financial freedom, passion, and purpose. Find your unique mojo and live an extraordinary life. Want to know more? Contact us at our website, acorntooak.org.uk. Long ago, you wouldn't think of galloping on a horse while doing calligraphy, and you wouldn't have attempted to ride your bike while typing a letter. Yet you think you can safely operate a multi-ton vehicle while texting? Behind the wheel is no place to multitask. If you want to BRB, drive now and text later. Lives depend on it. Visit StopTextStopRex.org, a message brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Project Yellow Light, Noise, and the Ad Council. Hi, so we're back. We're back after the break. So it's really important to um, take on board. Obviously, we've been talking about male and female uh, as, as separate beings. Uh, but it's also really important to understand that, you know, part of our wholeing, part of our um, human uh, evolution is bringing together the masculine and feminine energy within us. Um, so that we can become whole and it's so in in this investigation is very much about um, looking at the you know obviously the male and the the female qualities that are in us as a uh, individual being and whether we're male or we're female we have both aspects within us and it, you know obviously the male side is the the hunter the left brain the logical problem solution problem which is really important in some of the um obviously the career structures or you know whether we're a, an entrepreneur or um, we're in some type of employment it's really important to have those qualities so that we can um you know go from problem solution problem um um and the feminine is very much traditionally the right side of the brain, the creative, artistic, uh, passionate, uh, quite emotional, uh, with emotional intelligence. That's a totally different rodeo show. Uh, but it's really important to uh, balance out those qualities within self so that we are more holistic. And you know, part of that journey of bringing the masculine and the feminine together is realizing that you need, again, that quality of allowing communication between both sides of brain, uh, you know, allowing our empathy and trust, uh, you know, in the, the masculine qualities within yourself. You know, we have a tendency to trust those because it's the more logical, but also trusting mm -hmm. the feminine uh, aspects of self. So, again, I'll just hand over to Matthew so he can uh, give you his slant on this. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm sure there's many guys out there that, um, that, that you get the classic saying, oh, well, men, men can't multitask. And. I think, again, it, it's not something that we excel at and, and comes naturally. However, it doesn't mean that you can't do it. Um, and, yeah, it is very much ent entertaining both sides uh, and realising that we can we, we don't have to be all masculine all the time. I mean, it, it's been a long time since men's primary worries were running at prey or running <laughs> from prey. Um, so, so yeah, I think just trying to sort of understand and and entertain all parts of self, it gives you a greater understanding of how you work, um, whether you're more right brain, left brain, because you can have some guys that are, are very, very left brained and and some are very right brained, and there is there is no. Um, uh, what am I trying to say? There, 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 there is no issue with being able to switch from one to the other. So just doing different tasks, you can 
you can actually train yourself to work, be working within your right brain, uh, right brain when you're working on sort of computer stuff or, or problem solving, and then flip over to the left brain when when you're doing a different task. Um, it's something we're all all capable of, um, and certainly something we teach on our courses. I think also it's um, it's also when you realise that you know there is no wrong or right it just is you know when it's definitely when it comes to um different aspects of your brain and different aspects of um how you see things you know enculturation uh, or enculturation is actually more um prevalent in these types of areas because obviously if you're in a more masculine dominated society um you know and there are plenty of places in the world where that's true um it obviously a certain way of doing things is a lot more acceptable but when you're in a more feminine dominated environment where you have matriarchs who are you know especially when i'm thinking of italy where you have a matriarch in in charge of the family um it's it's very much a case of an awful lot of the feminine traits will come down uh, through uh, the d different generations. It's it just mm -hmm. is what it is. But what the most important thing is is to know that masculine qualities and feminine qualities are both unique and can inspire us to bring have a much more holistic life experience so you know men are very different from women uh, and we know that and it's beginning to realize i know when uh you know i'm slightly older than matthew uh, you know and, and we were in different uh eras in our lives where you know feminine power was on the rise you know burn the bra women's rights and it all became a little uh, vitriolic to be honest uh, and women would actually emasculate men or try and emasculate men because they thought mm. that this was the only way to feel empowered themselves Whereas, you know, we wouldn't, we're here to complement each other. We're not here to be in competition. You know, men and women fit very, very well together. And, you know, it's, it's when we learn to trust and when we learn to, you know, love unconditionally. You know, sometimes I will look at my husband and my son and I'll just shake my head and go, I have no idea where these guys are coming from, but hey, I love them every, <laughs> anyway. And you know, they they may like to see cars racing around tracks or or whatever, uh, or footballs. You know, I've got into oh soccer in the UK. You know, etc. Uh, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, et cetera. And yeah, I wish them well when they go on an adventure like that, you know, have a nice time. I'll be here when you get back. <laughs> and <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure as my uh, son grows older, I'll be having many more experiences like that. You, know, you go with an, you go on an adventure with Dad, uh, and I'll be sitting here on the towel when you come back from surfing or canoeing <laughs> or whatever they're getting up to. And, you know, men love or most men, I show obviously there's always uh, exceptions to the rule, but most men yeah. love physicality. They love physicality. And they like uh, getting a sweat on and, you know, doing uh, physical sports or whatever they like to, they enjoy doing. But that's not necessarily where a woman uh, as interests are. Some women love that type of thing and that's great and some women like to hucker down with friends and talk and explore uh, feminine relationships 
uh, within talk and stories and, uh, you know, uh, maybe having a craft uh, day or whatever it is. That's not necessarily what men enjoy, but some men enjoy it. So uh, it's just allowing ourselves to be who we are and allowing ourselves to talk and communicate to the other people because there's so much miscommunication happens because someone feels that uh, not safe enough to feel that they can be who they are. And whether that's being male or female, you know, there just needs to be better communication between the sexes. So, um, you know, it ultimately bridges the gap uh, and it creates calm out of chaos. You know, when we allow ourselves to uh, speak our truth or to, you know, at least not assume that we think we know what the other person is thinking, you know, don't, it's not helpful. It's really not helpful. So handing over to Matthew again to just get his thoughts. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, it is. It, it, it is all about communication. Um, if you work together and, and and communicate on something, you can you can work through anything. Um, and I think men, men, we 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 don't need so much information. If as long as we have have the facts around a situation, we don't need all the details. And and I think sometimes that's where sort of women will obviously want to share the details and get very passionate about that uh, and the man switches off and doesn't really need to do the details if it, so if you take a night out for example if you ask a bunch of women a week before the night out who's going what's happening where they're meeting what clubs they plan on going to and how they plan on getting home and what the sleeping are arrangements when they do get home they'll be able to give you a full account of who's going, where they're meeting, at exactly what time, who's coming with who, who's bringing what. They've got everything covered. And women need sort of need the, all those details to feel comfortable because then you can relax because you know the plan. You ask men what's happening a, a week before they're going out. Oh, who's going out? Oh, I'm not sure yet. All oh, right. Oh, well, where are you going? Oh, we haven't decided. Oh, well, how are you all getting home? Oh, we don't, don't know yet. Well, where are you going to stay? Oh, not sure. And we have a brief idea of every one and every one of these things that couldn't happen, that could or couldn't happen. But the details don't bother us. So I've had <coughs> girlfriends turn around to me before and say, "Are you are you hiding something from me? Are you are you really going out with your friends?" And I'm like, "Well, of course I am." And she's like, "But you've got no info. There's no details. How do you even know any of them are going to turn up?" And then, and my answer was. Well, because we said we would. So, it's men le need less details. We don't we don't plan stuff as much, and it's very much one thing at a time. And the the not understanding that could can either wind you up, or actually you can say, you know what, I don't understand that, and have a little laugh around it. So so you can josh around it. Um, the classic story around shopping, which we haven't shared, um, a frustration for men. Um, a woman will go into the first shop and see the perfect white blouse, exactly what they were looking for. However, they have to drag you around 14 other shops just to check that there isn't another blouse that's better. So a man would go into the first shop, say, white blouse, exactly what I'm looking for. I'm done. Shop, uh, that's my shopping done. Whereas the woman just wants to check that there isn't one that would fit slightly better or or was more like what she had in her mind. Men don't understand it. We just think, oh, white blouse or white T-shirt, whatever it be. Um, so we, in our natural state, we don't need as, as much information. Um, and I, I think that that's what's key when you, when you understand that the other one does need a bit more information or doesn't need all the information, they just need the fact. It just makes things easy. Uh, and you can work to work together so so successfully. Um, there's the saying: behind every successful man is an even more successful woman. Um, and every single 
sort of entrepreneur or, or male one that comes to, to mind is Theopophetus, who was on Dragon's Den, made a comment that he's only the man I am today because of the woman I have behind me. So he gives his wife just as much credit as he gives himself for where he is and what he's achieved. And I think that that's the, the core of what we're trying to get to is you can have the best, most amazing relationship by just communicating a bit more and just trying to understand. Um, you, st you still may not understand the behaviour. It still may not make sense to you. However, you can, you can let go of the angst and the, they're doing it because it's personal and, um, and everything like that. More often than not, an argument is just miscommunication. Um, another situation that came up on the Inner Balance course was a lot of the women said, well, one thing that's really frustrating um, from men is that you, you plan to have a date night and you go out on a nice romantic meal and, and everything's going great and you've got a few things to do when you get home and, and once them sorted, then, then you'll go up and, and have a bit of fruity time because that's ultimately what you'd like at the end of a, a, a meal. A man's thinking one thing, a woman thinks five other things. If you ask the man to do three jobs, he'll have them done before you've done your two. So it's just a bit of communication can, can really solve a situation. So we've really enjoyed talking to you tonight. I hope you've enjoyed it. We wish you all a fantastic Easter weekend and we'll see you next week. You take care now. Lovely. Take care.